Hello there Kangaroo Bros and welcome to the very first episode of Roost Dungeon Diaries. That's a great name, isn't it? Not really! Puma, what are you doing here? I'm part of the channel too, aren't I? But I wanted this to be a more relaxed and less edited episode. Do you know how long it takes to animate you? Five minutes! It may look like that, but no. Why don't you use my old Kangaroo Sprite? Okay. Alright, I guess I have no other choice. Now that we got that excuse for mad laziness out of the way, let's move on to the topic at hand. Dungeons. I will put a timestamp in the description down below if you want to skip the whole explanation part and want to go to the Rage Fire Chasm itself. Well, what is a dungeon? Dungeons are mainstay in MMORPGs and places where you can get a loads of experience and usually better equipment. They are always located in separated areas of the game, like caves, temples or castles. Those dungeons are always home to stronger enemies, so called elites, and also house bosses, even stronger enemies. All the dungeons in the world of Warcraft can be accessed by both factions and need a certain level to be entered. Great, so now that we got that out of the way, let's head to our first dungeon, the Ragefire Chasm. As you can see on the screen right now, the Ragefire Chasm is a very... hot place. <laughs> get it? Because of the lava! Thanks, Boomer. The Chasm is located in the Horde capital of Orgrimmon, which means it's pretty easy to access by Horde players. But what about Alliance players? It could be very difficult to run through an enemy's capital to reach a dungeon entry. But don't worry, if you use the Dungeon Finder, you and your group will be teleported right into the dungeon. Before we move on to the here and now, let's take a look at the chasm's history. It was once home to a band of trucks, the Ragefire trucks. Those trucks mostly left Orgrimmar alone, up until the point that the Searing Blade Cult set up shop in the chasm. They planned to attack Orgrimmar, because they are evil and that's what evil people do. Thankfully, those guys got repelled by a group of adventurers. A lot of time passed until Garrosh Hellscream became the new war chief of the Horde. During the Cataclysm, he tasked a group of shamans to use the power of the elemental planes to fight against the Alliance. This group was called the Dark Shaman. Part of that group splintered off the original group, joined the Twilight Hammer Cult and hid out in the chasm. But why? To study the more destructive elemental energies and use them to take over Orgrimmar. What else? So that's the reason for us being here right now. But what do we actually have to do here? We have to rescue a group of scouts trapped in the chasm, collect the insignias of the Dark Shamans to prove their demise, and last but not least, take out the bosses of the dungeon. Let me talk a little bit more about the bosses. Right now, you should be seeing the evil fire doggy Adarok. He was brought here from the Firelands and is the reason why there aren't any trucks left in the chasm, since he enjoys munching on them. He's easy to dispose of. The only thing you have to watch out for is this infernal charge attack. Just sidestep it and you should be golden. Next up is the Dark Shaman Corantal. He's one of the leaders of the shamans down here and just as easy to get rid of as Adarok. Do watch out for his Dark Storm attack though, since it can eat away at your health. Corantal is nice enough though to telegraph his attack by using these Dark Tornado thingies. The giant lava worm Slagmore is next. There isn't much to say about him besides the fact that he enjoys nothing more than killing stuff. Just keep peppering him with attacks and you should be fine. There is one thing to keep in mind though. Slagmore has these annoying lava spit attacks. Keep count of them, since he's going to disappear after 5 attacks to appear in another place. And last but not least, there is Lava God Gordoth. This guy tried to act as a conduit to the powers of the Firelands. And as you can see, that didn't really work out for him. Now that he's malformed and driven mad by those powers, it is our job to put him down. He can be a little bit annoying due to his ground stomp attack, and he also gets an attack boost once he reaches 25% health. But he's not too difficult to beat for a dungeon ant boss. And with God of's defeat, we also beat the dungeon. Is it over already? Yeah, but what did you expect? It's the first dungeon in the game. But you are bringing up a really good point. These videos will vary in length, due to the dungeons themselves. Duh. But that also means that they will be out more frequently, since they don't take up too much time to edit and record. I guess a 3 day interval sounds reasonable. Like always, 
Thank you guys for watching. Let us know if you enjoyed this video by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And become a Kanga Bull today by subscribing to the channel. Do it! Do it now!